Investigating ecosystems. So this is actually the process of collecting data um, and actually you know, going out there to actually learn about the environment. Um, we can monitor ecosystems, we can model them, and we can evaluate them over time, measuring both natural change as well as human impacts. Um, so they're better understood if we actually quantify some of their components. So quantify meaning give it like a, an actual number. Uh, we could measure the biotic or the living components, or we also could measure the abiotic, non-living components of the ecosystem. Um, the study should be of a named and located ecosystem. Um, so you should say specifically which region you're talking about. So I'm studying the pinyon juniper woodlands of Sedona, Arizona, for example. Um, Organisms can be uh, identified using a lot of different methods. Uh, we looked at using dichotomous keys, um, the di, di meaning two, and so you have two options. So in this case, is it asymmetrical or is it symmetrical? Does it have bilateral symmetry or radial symmetry? Does it have an anus or no anus? Can you see segments or can you not see segments? Is there an exoskeleton, no exoskeleton? And then you should be able to identify the species from that. Um, you can also, you know, collect specimens, use technologies, uh, use identification guides, etc. Another example of a dichotomous key. Um, so we want to measure biotic and abiotic factors um, and how they change through space and time, um, and then how humans might impact them. Um, so one method might be to do a, sort of a transect here. Um, so we can see here they made a line to the ecosystem and then they mark down each organism that they find um, at any given point. Um, you can use other methods um, like using whoops, sorry, using a quadrat at each point too, and then measuring the species that you find within each quadrat. These are good for zonation, seeing how that changes along a, a, a gradient. Um, so it's a couple different methods to, to go and sample an environment without having your own bias. Um, we could do a random sampling where we randomly choose where to put our points, randomly choose where to do our line transects, or randomly choose to do where uh, we put our uh, quadrats. Um, or we could do kind of the opposite, um, where we use a systemic method. So we do it uh, at regular intervals either a line at regular intervals, quadrats at regular intervals. Um, or we might actually choose to, to kind of select an area if there's obvious factor or obvious differences in one of the factors being investigated. Um, so maybe when we used our quadrats, we looked at the mud pit, maybe we would compare mud pit to an area just next to the mud pit, which is not disturbed um, to compare the difference in biodiversity. Um, whoops, sorry. Uh, we want to repeat these measurements to increase reliability. Um, that also will show us how changes are happening over time. Um, the more data we collect, the more accurate it tends to be. Um, so a method for uh, measuring abundance of non-motile, non-moving organisms is quadrats, um, which can help us measure population density, the number of individuals in a given area. We also could use it to calculate percent cover or percent frequency. Um, so like how many daisies in a given area, for example. Um, there's different methods for figuring out how many mobile organisms there are. Um, we could do um, an actual count or actual sampling. Uh, this is where you get things like the Lincoln index, which is the capture mark recapture. Um, so you capture a sample of organisms, you count the number uh, that you capture in your first sample, you mark them in some way, in this case, by putting a little white mark on the dragonfly, or you put a little um, band around their foot, as we see here. You let them go back into the environment, and then you capture a second um, sample, and then use this formula to find the difference. You don't have to memorize this formula, but you should know how it works, how to use it, how to apply it. You should be able to describe the capture, the marking, and then the recapture of those species. Um, species richness is going to be the number of species in a community. Um, so just the total number of species, as we see here. Um, and then evenness is going to be their relative distribution. So both of these communities have uh, an even richness. They both have 
four species of trees, um, but they have very different evenness. You can see this second one has mostly the yellowy trees, very few of the rest, whereas the first community actually has an even spread of all the trees. Um, so we would actually call this first community more diverse than the second one. Um, so we can actually use the Simpson diversity index in order to calculate that. Um, the Simpson inverse diversity index is going to be another equation that you do not need to memorize, um, but you should have an idea of how it works. And you should know that the higher value, the higher D value, is going to be the greater species diversity. Um, so if we get a really high value here, it means really diverse. If this value is closer to one, it's 